Welcome, friends. We gather in this space today and in this time to celebrate life, to celebrate the life of Shirley Geisler. We do so um, remembering that as we come together in grief and acknowledge our human loss, that God in God's wonderfulness grants us grace, that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, and in death, resurrection. Dying, Christ destroyed our, destroyed our life. Rising, Christ restored our life. Christ will come again. Here and now, dear friends, we are God's children. What we shall be has not yet been revealed, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Those who have this hope purify themselves as Christ is pure. Let us worship God together. Let us pray. Eternal God, we praise you for the great company of all those who have finished their course in faith and who now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you, and especially right now we praise you for Shirley, whom you have graciously received into your presence. To all of these, grant your peace. Let perpetual light shine upon them and help us so to believe where we have not seen, that your presence may lead us through our years and bring us at last with them into the joy of your home, not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. 
Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all of the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I happen to have a mother-in-law who is energetic and giving and highly spirited and very uh, devoted to her faith as well as mother to a special needs daughter. Fast forward to the time that I got a chance to meet Shirley. She was all those things as well. Energetic, spirited, funny, and indeed she, she reflected her faith in everything that she did. Uh, a caring, loving, patient woman. Uh, she seemed to be able to accomplish life with grace and with such a sense of humor and forward thinking as well as just positive reflections on life experiences. She reminded me very much of my mother-in-law. Now my mother-in-law is still around, about to turn 90. Uh, Shirley, you are no longer with us, but I feel blessed and I want your family to feel blessed to know that I actually had this conversation with Shirley possibly a year or so ago, wanting her very much to know that I so viewed her in that same spirit that I view my mother-in-law, someone that when I get into my 80s, I want to be like. Well, I told my mother-in-law this same information about Shirley. My mother-in-law chuckled that I wanted to be like her someday. Shirley chuckled that I wanted to be like her someday. God willing that I get to my 80s, I hope that I am a perfect combination of the two of them. With the grace and the love and the zest that they both bring to life and that I was blessed to observe. I wrote a poem for my mom about her joy and her sparkle. And I am so grateful for her, for her inspiration. And I, as all of you, cherish the love and the light that she gave all of us. And it is my prayer and my hope and my mission and determination to make sure that her love passes on. So this is a poem for my mom. It is good to smile, greeting all you meet, delight others with your charm. It is good to laugh, deep and loud, sparkling joy, lifting souls. It is good to endure, steadfast and true, knowing through the valley an oasis awaits. It is good to be patient, compassionate of the journey, supporting footsteps moving forward, no matter how wide or small. It is good to forgive scrapes and assaults, letting go, yielding room for peace. It is good to love, shining an internal light, kindling faith for generations to come.
You are fun, strong, amazing, joyful, outgoing, kind, smiley, intelligent, brave, compassionate, compassionate, and so much more. Don't forget, you are incredible. Hi, Miss Shirley. Just want to tell you thank you for all that you have done. You are extremely humorous. You are positive in the light and the darkness. You are a burst of happy. Love you and thank you so much. My mother, a living example of goodness, strength, truth, beauty, faithfulness, and kindness. If only we had the courage and strength to live as she did. Where does one begin to honor the grace and inner light that was my mother? A woman who was beloved by those who knew her and celebrated by others who might only have crossed her path. My mother's appreciation for music rang deep and truly was food for her soul. As my mother was adopted as a young girl by music teachers with Mennonite values, music permeated her life from high school chorus to adult church choir, where she delivered Methodist hymns with joy and gusto. She never missed an opportunity to attend a concert or musical, often answering with a resounding, yes, before we could end the sentence that began with, would you like to? Some of my mother's fondest memories as an only child were of the farm in Buff Bluffton, Ohio, where she joined her somewhat mischievous cousins drank in the adoration of her gentle aunts and uncles and bestowed love upon all the farm creatures. Later, our household was never without pets. Shelley, our Shetland sheepdog, completed our family and we had a long history with lap cats. Though she would have radiated had she been wearing the proverbial potato sack, my mom had a keen fashion sense. She creatively combined colors and separates and adorned herself with just the right accessories. Her ensembles were perfect, and I was proud to be with her. One day while working at Republic Aerospace in her 20s, a handsome young man approached her desk with the not so inventive opening line, haven't I seen you somewhere before? It worked, and my parents were married soon afterward though my mother claimed later that she was only playing along for my father's benefit. 40 years later, relatives and friends celebrated with my parents as they celebrated their wedding anniversary and renewed their vows. Together, my parents provided us with a safe, welcoming and loving home. My mother's devotion to us girls and her unconditional love was evident despite teenage angst or carry special challenges. My mother's inner strength never wavered. She welcomed visitors and unexpected company. I don't recall a time when there wasn't a coffee cake or other snacks at the ready in the event the doorbell rang with a surprise guest, and there were so many. Even after I moved away, many of my friends continued to do just that, not to see me, but to visit with my mother. My fondest memory of those days was awaiting my dad's return home from work while playing lawn croquet or board games on the front porch with my mom. Even at 83, she was always up for a game. If only we had a penny for every trouble, sorry, or dominoes game she played with Carrie throughout her life. My mother was, of course, an energetic, devoted employee. While working for the IRS, she once received a letter from a disgruntled citizen who claimed the IRS had reduced him to peanuts, complete with enclosed peanut shells. She was happiest, though, as a payable specialist at the nursing home where my grandparents resided, which allowed her to visit with them each day. My mom and her mother shared a years-long Scrabble competition, even though my grandmother tended to take some creative liberties and the dictionary would need to be summoned. My mother's courage and determination were never as evident as just before Lisa's wedding, when she suffered a burst arteriovenous malformation that required brain surgery. It was a frightening time for us all. But in true Shirley fashion, she met this challenge head on. Though she was still struggling to determine which was a fork and which was a spoon and was quite unsteady, she was determined to dance at Lisa's wedding and did. We often considered her the bionic woman from her many surgical rebuilds. 
I believe she recovered from surgeries quickly and fully, partially from the force of sheer will. One of her orthopedists even asked if she would be the designated poster child of sorts for their practice. There was no slowing my mother. At the very mention of the word travel, my mother was gleefully spurred into action and ready to go. As a family, we often packed up our station wagon nicknamed Green Gussie to visit relatives upstate in Vermont or Pennsylvania. Naturally, in-car games were prevalent and Lisa often wrote and read us her short stories, a precursor to her status now as a children's book author. Our most memorable trip though was a several weeks long trip across the United States with Green Gussie and a trailer. We survived tornado watches in Wisconsin, 103 degree heat in Nevada, losing our brakes coming down the mountain from Lake Tahoe, and some failed dinners from the challenges of high altitude cooking. Together, my parents cruised to the Caribbean and the Bahamas, toured Turkey, Greece, Africa, Hawaii, the British Isles, and Mexico. My mother excitedly looked forward to conferences all over the United States as part of my father's association with the Society of Allied Weights Engineers, where they were to rejoin dear friends and colleagues. You may know that my mother tended to be somewhat social. Her welcoming smile and open heart were obvious and people responded. If you weren't paying attention, you could easily lose her to conversations with people waiting in line at a store, people with dogs, people with small children, people in museums, people in parks, in short, people anywhere. We were once at a wine tasting where a limousine filled with Halloween revelers begged her to leave us and join them, promising to bring her home safely. In truth, every room she entered suddenly seemed so much brighter. Always, my mom soaked up knowledge and news of the world. She was a voracious reader, particularly fond of autobiographies, historic novels. Those with exotic settings or with strong female characters. No surprise there. Before the advent of e-readers, there was rarely less than three books or a half dozen magazines by her bedside or sofa. Her vocabulary was, to me, legendary. There were very few crossword clues that she was not familiar with, and I wouldn't have suggested that anyone face her at a word game. We laughed often with my mother about her inability to construct with Legos or follow product assembly instructions, but she could draw, paint, and craft with talent. Her doodles, while on the phone, could easily have been matted and framed. My mother was wholeheartedly devoted to her inherited Geisler family favorite team's lineup, the Knicks, the Mets, and the Giants. On game nights, she became uncharacteristically competitive with outbursts that were loud but oh so polite, as in, oh, I could just spit if her team was losing. She never did. Although she claimed not to be a collector, the many shells of teapots, crystal bells, or angels belied her. She did so love to surround herself with things of beauty. I remember vividly my mother sheepishly but impishly sneaking yet another crystal dish or bowl that she just had to have onto the counter for purchase and her happy excitement because she knew exactly where it would go when she arrived home. My mother faced some difficult challenges throughout her life, but never wavered from the belief that all would be well. She advocated fiercely for Carrie when necessary, for my dad as he faced a long battle with Parkinson's and dementia, then for herself as she battled lung cancer. Her sense of humor buoyed some of her uphill battles, as did her most devoted faith in a kind and just God. Her courage, strength, and determination were extraordinary, and she was an inspiration to all who knew her. And then there were the grandchildren. How lucky Chris, Eric, Krista, and Nick are to have had such a Nana. Nana's house was a place of joy, unconditional love and acceptance, fun and games, day trips, and well, lots of bacon. Christopher once run wrote about my mom for an English project. When Nana hugs you, there is a sense of overwhelming love and warmth, as if all the good things in the world were combined in one gesture of affection. And Eric recently said, when I think of Nana, I think of poetry. Me too. My mother 
was faithful. She trusted in God with all her heart. My mother's faith illuminated all her days and she gave her soul up to God always. Her faith showed as my mother glowed from an inner light. Forgiving. There was no hurt or slight that my mother couldn't forget fully. She believed it made things well with her soul. Joyful. I have never ever seen my mother greet another human being without a smile that said, I'm so happy to see you and be with you. Appreciative and generous. No matter how small a gesture, my mother was forever picking up small gifts or writing notes to let you know that you were loved and appreciated. If you happen to admire a trinket in her home, she would no doubt say, like it, take it. Welcoming. She loved to entertain and was a willing volunteer for hosting anything from family reunions to ladies' luncheons and book club. Her door was always open and anywhere my mother was felt like home. Accepting. My mother loved humanity regardless of race, lifestyle, or beliefs. There was never any doubt that my mother would accept you for you. She believed in the graciousness and goodness of all peoples, even when it didn't appear to be so. Empathetic. How my mother would hurt if you were hurting or worry if you were worrying. Because she was such a good listener, her empathy knew no bounds and it was healing. Optimistic. Even in the face of poor odds, my mother was able to summon strength for optimism and hope. Once on the 20th consecutively gray, cold February day here in Buffalo, she exclaimed, aren't the clouds beautiful today? While undergoing chemotherapy, her notes were titled, Gratitude Journal. Wow. Loving, my mother's heart was full of endless love. She loved fully and unconditionally and gave her her love freely and often. My mother, hugged with abandon, laughed with joy, clapped the loudest and longest, smiled the most, experienced life most fully and truthfully. Her love knew no bounds, and we are all so very blessed to have known her and basked in that one-of-a-kind, peaceful love. If I have one wish for my mother, it would be that we all aspire to live as she did, and perhaps our collective inner light will shine over all. It truly would be a wonderful world. Thank you, Mom. We love you forever.
Ecclesiastes 3 verses 1 through 4 To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 11. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. Amen. If I could use one word to describe Shirley Geisler, it would be joy. The woman was full of it. She was one of those church ladies that brought it everywhere that she was. Actually, this last December, I was gifted a candle that had the word joy on it. And to my surprise, a simple silver candle upon lighting turned into a multi-hued, colorful candle with a little bit of sparkle to it and it danced with joy. That's what I think of when I think of Shirley. She was just such a happy person. Our daughter Grace said that she was so full of happy. And that happy and that joy followed her in all things, even to some of the grumpiest people or the hardest circumstances. Shirley was full of joy. She gifts that joy to each and every one of us. Sometimes it was when we were having a hard day. Sometimes it was when we just weren't feeling quite so great. Or just a reminder that even in the mundane and the very boring, we can be filled with great joy. She was able to turn all of life into that. I'm so grateful to have known Shirley for the past four years. I'm so grateful to have been a recipient of her encouragement, for her love to just fall onto my family in so many different ways. I am grateful for her life. I'm also grateful, friends, that as we celebrate her life, we are reminded of her life eternal, her assurance and promise of heaven through her love of Jesus Christ and all that she was able to teach us about that faith-filled love. I hope as you are experiencing this celebration, I hope as you are remembering her, that you can hear the words in the Gospel of John that you will be peace-filled, that the joy that she brought to each and every one of us will continue, and that overall we will not only sense joy, but we will sense peace that she is in her heavenly home. May it be so for Shirley today, and may it be so for us. Amen. Please join me in the closing prayer. Awesome and loving God, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you that you have received and continue to receive and raise up surely even on this day. We ask, Lord, that you receive us as well. God, be with us in our grief. Put us in a mindset and a framework of joy. Help us, Lord, in the days ahead. Draw us close to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Friends, as you go forth from this time of worship, go forth with the hope, the knowledge, and the love of our Lord and Savior, and go in his peace, amen.